welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at doing a walkthrough of the 2016 Higher Multiple Choice paper. I'm going to split this video into two. So in the first video I'll look at questions 1 to 10. In the second video I'll look at questions 11 to 20 just to try and keep the videos a little bit shorter. So please stay tuned for part two which will be coming up soon. So let's start here with question one. Particles with the same electron arrangement are said to be isoelectronic. Which of the following compounds contain ions which are isoelectronic? So you can use your data book and you can find the periodic table which has the electron arrangements and you can use that to help you work out what the ions electron arrangements would be. So here we've got sodium. The electron arrangement of a sodium ion is going to be 28, whereas for sulfur it will be 288 because it gains two electrons. For magnesium, we have an electron arrangement of 28 and chlorine is 288. Potassium is 288 and bromine is 2818. Eight. And then finally calcium is 288 and chlorine is 288. So your answer here is D. Question two, which line in the table is correct for the polar covalent bond in hydrogen chloride? So if you have a look at the um, table in your data book, the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.2 and chlorine is 3. This means that the electrons sit closer to the chlorine than they do to the hydrogen, so it has to be either A or C. And that means that your chlorine is then slightly negative because the electrons are closer to it, so the answer is A. Question 3. Which of the following compounds has the greatest ionic character? For this one, I would look up the electronegativities of these elements. You'll find that cesium is 0 0.8 and sodium is 0 0.9. Fluorine is 4 and iodine is 2.6. So this means the electronegativity difference is 3.2, 1.8, 3 3.1 and 1.7. So the greatest ionic character is always where you have the biggest electronegativity difference. So that means that our answer is cesium fluoride A. Question four, the diagram below shows the energy profiles for a reaction carried out with and without a catalyst. Uh, what is the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for the catalyzed reaction? So remember that for an enthalpy change, we always do delta H is your products minus your reactants. So here's the products line, here's the reactants line. The products is 50 and the reactants is 100 and that is for a catalyzed or non-catalyzed reaction. So the answer is minus 50, which is B. Question 5. Limonene is a terpene molecule present in lemons. How many isoprene units are joined together in the limonene molecule? Isoprene contains 5 carbons. So what I would do is count up how many carbons you have and divide by 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you're going to do 10 divided by 5. That's your isoprene. So you have two isoprene units. The answer is B. Question 6. The following molecules give flavour to food. Which of the following molecules would be most likely to be retained in the food when, the water, when it is cooked in water? So for this you want a structure which has um, that more like a fat so that it doesn't interact with the water so you don't want it to have any OH bonds and you want it to have more of a kind of long chain hydrocarbon structure. So if we have a look at A, we have a C double bond O which may interact with water but then we've got this long chain. For B we've got a C double bond O but then we have this OH here so that means that can interact with water so it would be lost. C has this group here but it also has this OH group here so that one will definitely be lost with water and D has an OH group as well. So that one would definitely be lost with water as well. So A would be the most likely to be retained. Question seven. We have a vegetable oil going to vegetable fat, which the following reactions brings about the above change. So you need to know um, definitions for this and you also need to know the structure of an oil versus fat. So an oil is unsaturated whereas a fat is saturated. So here we have double bonds and here we have single bonds. Hydrolysis is to split something up with water. 
we're not doing any splitting, so it can't be hydrolysis. Condensation is where we're joining things, so we're not joining anything here. Hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen. And dehydrogenation is the removal of hydrogen. When you add hydrogen, you need to have a double bond to do it. So this is what we would do to do this one. Going backwards from fat to oil would be dehydrogenation. Question eight. The rate of hydrolysis of a protein using an enzyme was studied at different temperatures, which of the following graphs would be obtained? So enzymes have an optimum temperature that they work best at. Under that optimum temperature, they'll still work, but they'll be quite slow. And above that optimum temperature, they will be denatured and won't work at all. So the graph that fits that is D, where we have this slow reaction rate. We peak here and then we fall off really quickly. Question nine, which of the following is the salt of a long chain fatty acid? So a fat is glycerol with the three fatty acids, as is an oil. Glycerol is just a molecule and soap is your salt of a long chain fatty acid. Finally, for this video, question 10. Emulsifiers for use in food are commonly made by reacting edible oils with what? Now, I find this question to have some um, questionable wording. I'm not quite sure what they were meaning with this. The answer is glycerol. However, I'm not entirely sure why they put this question in with this wording. Um, emulsifiers, you would know, are um, like fats or oils, but they have one or two chains missing. Um, we don't go into much detail on how we've produced those, but this is what this question here is looking at. The answer is glycerol. If we react the edible oils with glycerol, then we get emulsifiers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you find it helpful. Please stay tuned for part two. It'll be coming soon. Um, and please remember to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for updates on new videos. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.